Do you remember seeing this Lego? Yeah. Episodic memory is a complex process and it's made up of component processes. So we believe two key component processes that contribute to episodic memory are number one, relational memory, and number two, pattern separation. Relational memory refers to the ability to bind different elements together, like what happened, where did it happen, when did it happen, and you have to bind these different information to form a cohesive episode. Pattern separation, uh, on the other hand, means um, the ability to discriminate very similar items from one another. Children are very interesting to study for episodic memory because, you know, all of us don't have any memories in the first two years of life. And all of a sudden, we, d we are able to fo form these memories for specific past events. So our goal is to decompose episodic memory into its building blocks and look at how these building blocks develop in this um, very particular interesting um, and important age window of four and six. For this study, we created two different games, one to test relational memory and one to test pattern separation. For the relational memory test, we created these uh, very fun and engaging animations. We'll visit two different houses, a red house and a blue house. Children are shown a tour to two different locations. In the red house, children will see uh, Pooh Bear, and Pooh Bear is seen with a ball, for example, and they will see a number of associations like this in the red house. And they would leave the red house, they would go into the blue house, where they would see Pooh Bear again, but this time Pooh Bear is seen with a book the rate at which they were able to correctly choose the ball in the red house reflects their um, relational memory ability. For pattern separation, children uh, see a series of pictures on the screen and they have a toy box with two buttons on them. One says indoor and one says outdoor. And all they had to do is to press either these images are seen indoor or outdoor more often. Indoor. Later on, we show them um, another series of images and give them a different toy box. And this time, this toy box has three buttons on them. One says exactly the same, one says kind of the same, and one says new picture exactly the same. Some of them are identical to the ones they saw during the indoor-outdoor game. Some of them are completely different and new from the ones that they saw before. And some of them are similar but not identical to the ones they saw. Kind of the same. The kid's ability to correctly identify the similar items as similar and not confuse them as old items reflects on how well they can pattern separate similar memories. We found that although both relational memory and uh, pattern separation change a lot between four years and six years, they're not related to each other. So a four-year-old could be very good at relational but not good at pattern separation or vice versa. There's no correlation, which suggests at a neural level, at least the potential, that there are, uh, there are known to be different sort of neural underpinnings of relational versus pattern separation, that those neural substrates can develop at different paces. The most important takeaway for me is the finding that you can separate episodic memory into its components. And that allows us a window onto the developing human brain, which may develop componentially in ways that we're going to be able to understand at the neural as well as at the behavioral level.